DKUTV. Welcome to Tarantula Cloud number 11. This is Dale tonight. My new edition, Fahrenheit, Brachial Palma Bomai, Mexican Fire Leg. One of the teas I've been wanting for a long, long time. Uh, one of my favorite brackets, just didn't have the right opportunity to get one. Finally got one. She's around two and a little under two and a half inches long and uh, will be featured later on in the feeding segment of this. So I won't spend too much time talking about her. Um, just your classic Fire Leg. And she's gorgeous. Very happy to finally have a Fire Leg. Uh, here's my scorpion update for those of you who were not able to see uh, Tarantula Cloud number 10. This is Matrix. Uh, it was my new addition in that video, my Emperor Scorpion. He's a male. And I uh, wanted to update him so uh, everyone knew that he was actually doing okay. He's been all over the place in this enclosure. He eats very well. Uh, he's been on a little bit of a worm diet. Uh, he's had a couple of worms here in the past week but mostly he, uh, he eats crickets and he's been doing really great the humidity and everything in his enclosure has been keeping well the heat has been keeping well he's been utilizing both the cool side and the warm side as he should and I am still really really happy that I got this guy he's a really nice change of pace from the tarantulas and uh, hopefully I'm gonna give him another one soon I didn't get I was going to get him a, a mate but I ended up going ahead and getting a the fire leg instead because I got a really good deal on her but um these emperor scorpions are cheap and he'll have one uh, friend in there soon he does a quick look at his enclosure with uh we're not gonna waste any time we're gonna get right into our feedings we got a lot of good ones here so let's get started scarlet acanthus curiogena colada brazilian giant white knee we're going to alphabetical order My always greedy baby. She's the only tarantula in my collection whose hairs give me a little bit of trouble. I don't even have to open up the enclosure. I can just rub my hand on the top of the enclosure or just pour some water in there. She can be completely in her hide and the hairs inside the enclosure just seem to bother me no matter no matter what. I mean they're all over in that enclosure and um, she could probably use to be uh, a cleaning in there so she'll probably have a new look. Uh, enclosure soon because she needs to get that one cleaned out. Earthwalker, Acanthoscuria and Subtilis, Choco Mossy Brown. I didn't really fully get the attack in there, but I did want to show what she looked like. She molted about a month ago. And she's a very reclusive and um, very skittish little tarantula. I had to be very careful with her because she'll run out in a second. She gets spooked very easily. But she is a really good eater and she's very beautiful to be a sling. Ink, a Fauna Palma Simani, Costa Rican Zebra. Speaking of slings, this one is <laughs> not like my other Fauna Palmas, my cow coaties. This one actually eats very well on camera and um, rarely misses a meal and just very greedy for a little, for a little uh, sling. She is already starting to show her orange on the bottom that the Samani's display, and she also has orange spinnerets, which is awesome. It's already coming out on the sling. This is Luna, Avicularia, Avicularia, pink toe. This is my wife's tarantula. And she went through a long period where she wouldn't eat on camera, but now she's starting to eat like an avic, which is great. Uh, her abdomen is always full now. She used to worry me because she wouldn't eat and or she would not take uh, prey big enough to really fill her up but now she eats pretty well she takes two crickets down every two weeks and that seems to be more than enough for her she's another one who's going to be getting a rehouse soon she's going to be going into a little five gallon tank I just got to get the lid for it and uh, our barrio set up of course so I just gotta wait to get my lids and she'll be going to a five gallon very soon. But she's been doing great in this Rubbermaid container. 
Eclipse, Bracky Palma Alba Pelosum, Honduran Curly Hair. This is her last meal before she um, before I uh, stop feeding her because she's about to go into pre-malt. And uh, as you can see, her rump is just insanely huge. So this is her last meal before until she malts, which shouldn't be uh, too much longer from now. I can definitely tell she's um, ready to malt, but she'll eat all the way up until the day she malts. I mean, she's one of those teas that does that, but usually when I can tell that they're about to malt, I cut them off and just let them uh, do their thing. I have a tea tea who is in the same position, not featured here because she's in pre-malt and uh, should be malting any week now. Here's Fahrenheit again. Fire leg, and of course she can eat. You don't appreciate these uh, tarantulas until you, I mean, you can't really truly appreciate them until you see them in person. They, I mean, the camera does some justice with it, but the personality and the way this tarantula looks in person is just amazing. And all of you know that if you have them, because uh, it's a, one of the more common ones, and really your um, collection isn't complete until you have one of these. But it's, this is one of the ones that's been eluding me for a long time, and I finally got one, and it's really great. Phoenix, Brachypalmia Emilia, Mexican Painted Red Leg. And <laughs> very, very greedy. She used to hate worms, and now she takes them down with no problem. Sometimes I think she actually performs work prefer worms now instead of crickets but she um her abdomen is not uh that big so I'm giving her worms right now just to bulk her up a little bit. Uh should not be going into uh pre molt for a while now. She just molted a couple months back so she should be good for a while. And she is really beautiful. Fire bracket palm of vagans, Mexican red rump suspect male right now haven't had a good molt to determine it yet but right now he he did look more like a male before uh, I want to say around a couple of months ago but he's actually been bulking up and showing displays of uh, of looking like a female I mean when he's up against the glass you know you look underneath that the apogastric furrow it looks like it's sticking out a little bit but I you know it's just really too hard to tell. I had to really confirm it with a molt, and I haven't had a good one yet. So hopefully the next one I can get one and confirm it. Right now I really just don't know about this one. I'm just calling it a suspect male because it, it's with the growth rate and everything, it just looks more like a male. Fantasy cyclosternum fasciatum, Costa Rican tiger rump, and this lady always eats. She is not shy at all. She's very docile at times. Um, I wouldn't dare try to handle it because. She does get spooked very easily, but uh, she is very calm. I can open up the lid and uh, do whatever I need to do in there. And sometimes she even comes out of the lid and stays on the side while I finish, and then she'll go back in on her own. She's very docile at times, but I wouldn't dare try to handle her at this stage. Ocean Storm, Comanda Palma Sandra Pubescence, the Green Bottle Blue, the GBB, and finally got a good look of her outside of her webbing. She's webbed up pretty well in there, and uh, this is for the first time in a long time that she's actually come out on top of the web and eat. She's been waiting down in there for him, or the cricket will go down there immediately, and she'll snatch him up before I can get a good shot of him. And on the side of the enclosure, it's really hard to get a good look in there. As you can see here, uh, it's just not as clear of a shot. This is not too bad, but if you go around the other side, it's completely webbed up, and this is probably the only corner in here that I can get a good shot over. But she is looking insanely beautiful right now, and and uh, still eats like a like a beast. Cotton candy, Grandma Sola Mall, Chilean Gold Fluff. One of my uh, favorite tarantulas in my collection. One of my sweeter ones. The only time she really gets um, a little angry is when she's hungry, which is <laughs> usually all the time, but. Um, after a meal, she is so sweet, it's it's um, almost unbelievable. But when she's hungry, she can be very, very uh, angry and pissed off. And I wouldn't say aggressive, but if I open up the enclosure and she's hungry, she will. She won't throw a threat posture, but she'll clearly let me know that she's not happy that I'm in her enclosure. 
Orion, Gramostola rosea, or the Pottery, Chilean rose. This is the brown color form. And uh, she always eats on camera. This is probably one of my top five greediest tarantulas. She will eat all day long. Uh, it, I think maybe a couple of times I put something in there and she wouldn't take it. And I was over the winter and she she was doing her fasting thing and uh, that only lasted for maybe a couple of weeks and then she was back to eating and then she'll eat pretty much whatever I put in there worms crickets it doesn't matter her she eats uh, very well very big tarantula she's around she's uh, around five and a half inches almost close to six inches long she's a big girl this is one of my favorite shots of Orion she is one of my favorite tease as far as filming because she's always out in the open and she gives me good angles and she almost seems like she's posing in everything that she does. Every time I film her she's just magnificent uh, display of a tarantula. Brownie, Grandma Sola Poker Piece, Choco Golden Knee finally turned into a Golden Knee as far as her appearance. Finally got the yellow striping on the legs. They're still not quite golden yet. I would say they're like a little bit of a pastel yellow but she finally is black instead of a little beige uh, sling. I've had her for a year and a half, bought her as a half inch uh, a year and a half ago and she's around three inches now. Very slow growing. Her counterpart, Star, Grandma Solar Poker Peas, Choco Golden Knee. This is my suspect male and uh, he still has a little bit more brown coloration on him. He's not as black or as uh, big as brownie his legs are longer that's why I said he's a suspect male he's a little bit different and his growth rate has been tremendously fast I've had him for maybe six months and I uh, bought him as around an inch and he's grown uh, with another molt he'll be bigger than brownie so that's why I think he's a suspect male his growth rate is much more impressive and um, he's grown considerably faster but not so much larger so all the signs are there. Pistol, Grandma Sol Rosea, Chilean Rose, my mature male. This is the one that um, I was trying to mate with Queen. If you didn't see the mating video, uh, I made it Queen with Perseus, my other mature male. But a uh, Pistol here has not even made a sperm web. I'm still waiting for him to get going. Um, I've got plenty of time with him, so I'm not in any rush or hurry to, uh, to do anything desperate with him. But uh, he is definitely uh, taking his time with um, making his sperm web and and doing what the mature male does but he'll he'll get there and I got uh, I got some uh other couple other females I can breed him with here's whisper grandma solar rosea a chilling rose some people have said that she might be a gray color for him I don't know I um she kind of just looks like a, a G rosea who needs to molt <laughs> you know maybe I, I mean after until she molts I really can't tell uh she eats very well she was uh, wild caught and um She's the smallest of all my G. Rosea. She's around f four inches long, and uh, I haven't really measured her yet. I haven't had her that long. She was a new addition, also featured in Trench of Cloud Number Ten. For those of you, of you who didn't see her, she's my new addition. I got her um, around the same weekend. I got the uh, the Scorpion. I think maybe a week after, but she's um, been doing great, and uh, I kind of just think she's a very Silverish looking <laughs> uh, Gram Sol Rosea. I don't know if she's a great color form. This is Argos Nando Campanis, uh, Brazilian Red. Um, hard to see the attack there, but also just want to show you what she uh, has been looking like, just like the uh, the Insubtilis. Uh, this one is very reclusive, uh, like uh, my other Nandu that I will be coming up here next, Andromeda. But uh, she has been really doing great in this little enclosure and uh, very small tarantula uh, not so much skittish but just very very elusive doesn't like to be messed with at all so um, she really comes out to eat she'll wait in there until the cricket comes in so the only way I can really get a good look at her is by pulling it up and let you guys see that there here's Andromeda Nandu Chromatis uh, Brazilian white stripe bird eater always um, <laughs> more than willing to give me a show with her feedings she eats very well that's a hit she's getting huge and like I always said if this enclosure was um, 
this enclosure is actually too small for her, but since she burrows so deep, she can go on top and the bottom is actually perfect for her. And she loves it. I wouldn't, I don't mess with her. Ever since I put this setup like this, with just a big piece of uh, bark, um, making a cave with two uh, exit points on there, and the water dish on top, she kind of has like a two level uh, house and she loves it. She actually is out all the time and I see her all the time, which before it wasn't the case. With a standard setup, she burrows uh, too much. You won't ever be able to see her. This is Olympus, uh, Paraphyse of Scrofa, the Chilean Copper. And this little lady has uh, regained her appetite after her molt. Uh, she used to eat a lot better on camera. Now she's a little um, skittish. Sometimes I put stuff in there and then she won't, she won't eat anything. She'll wait to come back. Before she used to attack it like a, like a beast, but she's a little less... Um, Frenetic and you know as far as being kind of schizo uh, she she doesn't run around the enclosure so much when I open up the, the enclosure and do things in there she'll she's much calmer but now she that's translated over to her feedings too she's much calmer with her feeding so next up we have Pandora paraphrase you have the species unknown and she's been eating like crazy lately she went on a very big fasting uh, again in the winter like some some teas do but uh, she's regained her appetite. Her rump is just huge, and as you can see there, she's got a big old booty. That's my good buddy, guitar guy, 1031, uh, likes to say. Uh, her booty is absolutely huge, just like a pair of Pfizer's. But uh, she, 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 I don't overfeed her. She eats on a regular schedule every two weeks, and uh, she usually gets a, a worm or or a large cricket, and she's fine with that. And uh, that's a good look of her from the front. She's very docile. Uh, she did one day when I opened up the enclosure. Usually she walks out, and for some reason I opened up the enclosure and she bolted out, and she didn't get loose or anything. But it was very odd behavior for her. Uh, Genesis Samoponus Camerjai Trinidad Chevron. This is my male, not mature yet. Big guy, very leggy. He's around easily six and a half inches long. I mean, he is huge, and uh, he's not even matured out yet. So this guy's gonna be a uh, pretty long tarantula. It, he might not be quite six and a half, but he's definitely over the six inch uh, mark. So he, either way, he's he's a big male and hasn't matured yet, and uh, very beautiful. He's very blonde. Uh, this the camera picks up just a little bit here, but um, in natural lighting, he is very very blonde, and his uh, carapace is like a pastel, a very light pastel green. He's a very beautiful male. I, I mean, I can't complain with the look. He's he looks amazing. Uh, blonde camera guy, uh, almost looks like a polka. Raven, Formitibus concertis, a Haitian brown bird eater. This is another one of my teas that has kind of scaled back her uh, aggressiveness as far as eating. She used to have just vicious uh, attacks, and now she's very gentle, and she she doesn't go berserk as trying to look for the prey when it gets in there. And um, I haven't been I've been keeping her on a good, nice two week schedule. I don't want to overfeed. Uh, some of these bigger ones. Sometimes you have a tendency just because they eat them, you'll just toss the biggest stuff in there. I try to give her all my teas a very steady diet and not try to blow them up and too big just because she'll eat them. Uh, I try not to do that. Uh, she gets two worms here. These uh, worms are actually very small. They're not big at all. They've got no. They're not quite super worm size. They're around medium sized worms, and for her they're perfect. She eats those up and she's fine. And uh, it doesn't uh, blow her up. I really definitely don't want this tea to grow up too fast. But she's um, been doing really, really great. And as you can see, her rump's not that big. Coloration is great. She molted just a little while back, so she's not due for one for a while. You can kind of see a little bit of a spot back there. But I think she's still a while, uh, ways off before she molts again. Okay, last tea of the vid. Trinity, Pocleotheria, Sophusca Highland, the ivory ornamental. I didn't capture the... Uh, attack but I just want to show you guys what she looks like after she molted. She molted around uh, two weeks ago somewhere around in there and she is just insanely beautiful even as a sling and she's not a skittish one she's always out she she I see her more than any of my other teas she's always out and uh, not um, afraid of the light right here she's uh, freaking out just a little bit because I've turned the enclosure and she's she's trying to enjoy her meal but wanted to show her off to you guys well, that's going to do it for this one this week, guys. Uh, look forward 
uh, new uh, vids and features coming up in the future. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.